Good afternoon, everyone. Kerasoft Technology would like to welcome you to our Avanti Flycast Partners webcast. Before we get started, please note that all of your lines have been muted to reduce any background noise, and we hope you will take full advantage of the chat pod on the left side of your screen to ask any questions throughout the presentation. If we are unable to get to your questions, our team will certainly follow up with you offline. This webcast is being recorded, and a copy of the presentation will be emailed to you. Just to tell you a little bit about Kerasoft, we are a trusted government, education, and healthcare IT solutions aggregator, delivering software and support solutions to federal, state, and local government agencies and enterprise healthcare organizations. Kerasoft maintains dedicated teams to support sales and marketing for all of its vendors, including VMware, Dell EMC, Avanti, Hytrust, F5 Networks, and Adobe. Our contact information will be available at the end of the presentation. So please don't hesitate to call or email us for any of your needs. Today, I'm lucky enough to introduce our presenter, Rich from Flycast Partners. At this time, I would like to hand the floor over to you, Rich. Thank you so much, Sierra. I appreciate that introduction. And folks, I would like to welcome you to a joint presentation sponsored by Avante, Kerasoft, and Flycast Partners on Avante's IT Service Management webinar. Today, our presenter is going to be Kyle Hamilton. Kyle is an experienced pre-sales senior solutions consultant with extensive experience in collaborating with clients on IT strategies. He's been in the IT industry for well over 20 years and has experience with a variety of IT tools and publishers ranging from ITSM, ITAM, and ITOM. He has experience from multiple types of positions in the industry, allowing him to have the bigger picture in mind when helping organizations with their IT needs. Now, before we get started, Kyle, I'm going to introduce a little bit about Flycast and Ivante both. So a little bit about Flycast Partners. Uh, Flycast is here to deliver seriously amazing IT experience. We were founded and staffed by personnel that have many years of experience in the IT space. We took the best ideas from these collective experiences and added the best components necessary to grow and become a leading value-added reseller in the North American IT market. We offer best-in-class implementation services and training in IT service management, IT asset management, IT operations management, enterprise service management, and workload automation spaces, all using ITIL best practice. Our professional services can easily scale up or down to meet the IT needs of any customer, regardless of your size, complexity, or budgetary restrictions. We offer our implementation services both on-site and remote, as well as training to reinforce your company's long-term IT success. Our ongoing remote administration support service offerings will enable your organization to focus on those normal day-to-day -day operations saving you both precious time and money. I encourage you to reach out to us at 844-FLYCAST, that's 844-359-2278, or visit our website at flycastpartners.com and chat with one of our IT experts. With that, I would also like to introduce Ivante. Ivante has, is headquartered just outside Salt Lake City in an area of the United States that the New York Times recently called the next Silicon Valley. Now, Avante employs just over 1,700 people, and Avante IT software is used by 78 of the Fortune 100 companies. Enterprise IT departments use Avante to marry their IT service management, IT asset management, IT security, endpoint management, and supply chain capabilities. Avante's mission is very clear, to help their customers succeed through the power of unified IT. Whatever your IT challenges, asset, mobility, service, or security management, Vante has solutions that can help you quickly, effectively, and economically. Flycast Partners and Kerasoft are proud to partner with Avante to help get you access to the tools and services your company needs to increase efficiency, security, and profitability. Please make sure that you type your questions in the section, the Q&A section provided during this presentation today, and Kyle will try to answer as many as time will allow. Without further delay, I'm going to turn this over to you, Kyle. Okay, thank you, Rich. Can you hear me okay? Absolutely, loud and clear. All right, excellent. Give me just a moment here to share out my screen. And if you just let me know as soon as you see it, Rich. We see it, welcome to IT support. Okay. Well, welcome everybody. Good afternoon. Good morning, depending upon where you're 
where you're uh, from or where you're at. Um, again, my name is Kyle Hamilton. I'm going to be providing a, an overview of some of the core functionality of Avanti Service Management um, and talk a little bit about how that applies from a couple of different aspects. The first one of those being from an end user or customer standpoint, making things easy for uh, the, the customer to be able to report an issue or to make a request of the service desk through the Avanti self uh, service portal. So one of the key aspects to self service is of course call avoidance. So we'll hopefully provide a, a way for the end user to be able to self help or support themselves, answer their own question in a vast majority of cases. One of those ways you do that is through a knowledge base. So one of the key components of the Avanti self service portal is giving users access to collections of knowledge articles. So as they hit the portal, make it easy for them to simply start typing their question or their topic or their keywords into the portal. And it's going to start returning a results list of how to articles or FAQ uh, articles so that they can hopefully, you know, find something within that knowledge base that matches that particular topic. So maybe they have an email problem. Uh, accessing email so they you know find an article related to you know being able to navigate to the the webmail portal and use that as an access method so they've got the ability to easily search through that knowledge base and you have as a, a user administrator the ability to configure different collections of knowledge so you can support different groups of customers with knowledge that's specific to them, as well as being able to manage your internal knowledge if you have multiple levels of support with each level needing, you know, more detailed or maybe more specific knowledge. Now, in addition to being able to self-help through the knowledge base, you also provide them easy access to a service catalog. So if they have uh, a particular issue with email, when they don't find an article that's relevant or anything that resolves their particular issue, then they have the ability to browse that service catalog. And Avanti provides uh, a little over 80, right at 80 templates out of the box. So all of these that you see here around IT services, HR facilities, things related to you know equipment requests, onboarding requests, things like that, as well as your typical break fix issues all your incident templates are available here as well so if i have an email problem and i don't find that resolution or that answer in the knowledge base then maybe there's a simple template so that i can submit that issue to the service desk and get a response in that way so templates can provide them an easy way to submit those typical issues and be able to track and manage the status and progress through their, my items page. So they need to come back in and get an update, find out where it is within the process. They can easily select on you know, those little business card icons and go in and view notes and leave notes and view activity through here for both their um, incidents, break fix issues like email, as well as something more complex like a service request, for example. So, typical example or common example is management of user moves, adds, and changes, um, whether that be terminations, uh, hiring. So, you also have the ability through the catalog to create specific forms unique to each type of request so that you can put things like required information, set your data requirements, you can define what types of information or type of information is necessary. So in the case of onboarding employees, of course, you know, who's being hired and what type of employee are they and when do they need to be ready to go and what type of equipment and access and facilities, you know, do they need. You have the ability to go in as an administrator and define these questions. You can set up things like the costing information, which you'll see over on the right hand side. So if you're doing any kind of, whether it's internal 
tracking for budgeting purposes or you're looking to charge back for services rendered, um, that can be built into the service request as well. And we'll talk a little bit more about what happens when we submit these requests, uh, when we look at things from an internal perspective in just a moment. You also have the ability to um, not only search requests, but view details related to announcements and news. You'll see kind of a scrolling banner at the top. So if there are outages, um, scheduled maintenance, things like that, that you want to make users or customers aware of, those things can be publicized through the self-service portal. And Avanti also offers a unique option that I think makes self-service much, much easier for end users to interact with. It's called the Avanti Hub. So rather than forcing users to have to navigate to a portal and log in, they simply have a desktop agent that runs. So the minute they log into the machine, the hub is there and available for them in their system tray, and they can simply pull it open at any point in time. That way, if they want to um, check status of a particular issue, for example, maybe they're being asked to approve somebody's onboarding request that's been submitted to that self-service portal, for example. They can open the hub, pull open the request and review the details, go in and provide their decision as to what they want to, you know, proceed or send it back and be able to do that from the desktop without having to open up the browser and log in and you know navigate to that that particular request and approve it so it makes puts things more at the end user's fingertips a couple of steps closer and brings it a lot closer to email so that users aren't and you're not having to process as many emails which are going to be much more costly and time consuming to deal with when you don't have the ability to put the form controls and requirements around the data that's necessary and things like that. They also have the ability to use this for all of those same types of requests. So they have the ability right from their desktop to be able to open up and browse that same employee onboarding request, but again, saving them the time and hassle of having to navigate and log in. You don't want the self-service portal to generate, you know, uh, password reset requests uh, from users trying to get to the, you know, the service catalog. So by making that hub available, it makes it very close to them, you know, on the desktop and hopefully provides a good alternative to them sending an email that you didn't have to process in some manner um, and gives them the same exact options they have through the self-service portal to be able to access the knowledge base, to be able to submit tickets and issues, um, both directly as well as through an automated chatbot capability. So you don't necessarily have to have somebody manning the service desk, um, but instead can provide them with this chatbot tool so that they can simply log, open up the hub on their desktop and being able to interact with Avanti service management right there through the hub when needed and when done, they simply close the hub and when they need it again, they go right back to their tray and it's there and ready for them. So it makes things very end user friendly and easy from a customer perspective to be able to submit those tickets to get their status, check on things and participate in approval processes when needed. Uh, in a very efficient and easy manner. Now, from a staff perspective, we're going to open up the Avanti interface and you'll see in this drop down view that out of the box, Avanti ships with several different types of roles for different types of users. And you can customize and expand upon these to fit your environment specifically but these are used to, of course, control what a user has access to, what data they have visibility to, what their dashboards look like, um, things like that, what kind of permissions they have. So if we take a look at an individual contributor on the service desk, 
you know, logging in as an analyst. When they log in, they'll have typically a set of dashboards assigned. So they can be either tabular, like we see here, or they can also have things set up in a graphical format, you know, depending upon their preference, really. Then way, they can have kind of a summary view of the activity, whether it's assignments by group and team or records, you know, unassigned priority ones and twos and things like that. And you can provide them with the capability to drill down through those dashboards down to individual records so that they can begin working, you know, straight from those dashboards. They also have the individual workspaces available to them, you know, based on their role or profile up here at the top. And they can have multiple dashboards assigned depending upon, you know, their area of focus, whether they're focused on responding to incidents or dealing with changes. Maybe they're focused more on, you know, those service requests and onboarding requests. Now, in this particular format, you see it's kind of tabular uh, layout with basically my team and my, all my requests assigned to me um, laid out for me. And they can see right here at the top, you know, in my active service request for my team that I'm going to onboarding request like we just looked at in that self-service portal. So you'll see all the details that were you know, populated into the request down below along with that costing information based on the options they selected um, totaled up over on the right hand side. And one thing that Avanti is very good at is allowing, you know, providing you with the capability to be able to automate a lot of the workflow and the process um, in a drag and drop fashion. So in this particular case, you'll see that there are couple of approvals that are currently pending. Now, you'll notice one of those is approved because I actually approved that a moment ago through the self-service portal, but then it's then proceeded to that next level approval that we're pending right now, in which case I might simply just log in and go ahead and, you know, do that through here. So if I want to go ahead and come in and approve, I can come in and, you know, provide that approve reject decision so that um, once that's done in my request, that can be reflected. Well, I guess actually we've got, uh, in this case, we've got a couple more uh, approvals to be done. So when that goes from level one to level two, they can log into their mobile device, they can open up the, the self-service portal, they can open up their hub and approve it. And once approved, I'm making this go through that one, I'm gonna grab this down here. Then you'll see once that status is approved, then your workflow or your process engine will automatically then start generating those tasks and child assignments. Now, at any point in time, from a, an individual analyst perspective, if they want to look at that workflow, they can always open up uh, a view-only window to see exactly what that process looks like. And they can see the exact path that this particular record has taken through that, you know, some of those decision blocks and through those task blocks. So they can get an understanding of what the next step is and what's required in order to move to that next step. And we'll talk a little bit more, look at that a little bit more in just a moment from an administrative perspective. But that allows you as an admin to be able to build those workflow elements very easily um, into the service request process or your incident management process or into your knowledge management process um, without having to get into code development that has to be maintained um, and you know, causing worries when it comes time to upgrade and, and update in terms of what happens to that code and what needs to be modified. So all of this type of uh, form building as well as the workflow can be done all through the interface so you don't have to require those developer level skill sets. Now from an incident management perspective, 
with shade. I'm going to draw down into all of my active incidents. And we'll take my email incident I submitted a moment ago. You'll notice at the top of the form here, um, as well as the same case in the service request, we track service level targets and, and your SLAs. So that you're able to you know, track response times and resolutions, as well as create those automated escalation points within these SLAs or within these targets. So that if you're looking to respond at a certain time or if you're looking to resolve issues at a certain time, you can define those escalation points. And you'll see down here, just below in the details for this incident, a journal of all of those automated notifications that get sent through that workflow process, as well as the ability for your staff and users to go in and add you know, updates to that journal manually. So if they need to record you know, a brief memo of their activity or report a voicemail, they can easily log their time and activity in that journal through here. They can also create what's referred to as quick actions. So they can create uh, macros for repetitive common tasks so that maybe instead of having to go through and you know, click the add button and update those journals manually, I can have it set up to automatically prompt me for details. So if I just want to put an update in there and show that work was performed, then I can go ahead and add that journal entry very quickly through those quick actions and I can create those for all matters and purposes, whether it be you know, simply updating this incident, reassigning it, closing it, resolving it, or creating you know, pre-built notifications that I can then use to automate communication to the end user or the customer. So if I need to send them an update, rather than having to type that content out, I can select that particular action from the quick action menu, and it'll pull the data necessary from the ticket, generate the email to that customer, and give them what I want them to have, um, but without the hassle of having to go through and you know, provide all of that content you know, directly. So the quick actions are a great way to be able to automate users' day-to-day -day tasks and make things much more efficient rather than having to go through those repetitive mouse clicks over and over throughout the day. Now, one example in case maybe once I resolve a particular issue, I'm going to go in and I want to close the incident. I mean, go in and say this is a software related issue. We resolved it on the first contact, and maybe we updated the software with a patch. And be able to have that action automatically notify the customer, of course, that that ticket's been closed, as well as update my response target. So I'll see my automated notifications go out for my workflow up here at the top. I'll see that my response target has been met, right? And as soon as it trips my resolution, I'll also see that I met my resolution target for that particular request. So I'm able to report on the success or failure of meeting those you know, SLAs in each and every case. And then if I want to take this you know, whatever resolution I have in this ticket and be able to then push this into one of those new FAQs or how-to articles that I can then provide to users through my self-service portal. Another great example of a quick action that I can kick off to automatically take that content and then make it available to the next user that, that hits that hub or goes into that self-service portal looking for you know, some type of a, an issue. Now, from an administrative perspective, things like configuring that self-service interface, building uh, service desk analyst dashboards, and designing the forms, and laying out the workflow, um, Avanti provides some very simple tools for the administrator to be able to do that without having to get into code. So if I change to an administrative role, now I have access to 
those administrative tools I can use to go in and configure user interface. I'm going to be able to go in and this is probably one of, for a lot of customers one of the most important you know, features of a service desk is the ability to make it look the way they want it. Um, so to be able to go in and configure text and colors and graphics and logos all in a simple format where I can go through and simply replace those elements and choose you know the color scheme and, and the themes that I want to apply and be able to do that very easily um, is a huge part um, of making that self-service portal well thought of and broadly adopted as well as making service desk staff you know, happy um, with the application. Now, another component is the workflow that I mentioned. Things like the new hire process. So Avanti provides a very simple way to be able to go in as an administrator and build not only the form itself, so which questions need to be answered in the case of an onboarding request or a termination request. Um, you know, is it free text? Is it a checkbox? Is it a date that we're asking them for? So being able to lay out the questions you want and again drag and drop tools for me to be able to go in and drop a new question onto the form and define its you know specifics, give it a label, and to be able to lay out you know the different types of requests all the way to how do we then take that request once they hit the save button and we process it through the service desk. Now logged in as an administrator, I have the ability to go in and make changes to this versus just having a view only window like the service desk analyst. So in this case, if I wanted to uh, alter the approval process, add an additional chain in the approval uh, process itself, I can just grab that block and drop that new approval block onto my canvas, go in and fill in the details in terms of who is the approver or who are the approvers if I'm assigning it to some group of users by role or uh, you know QSR team, as well as being able to then decide where it fits back into the process. So, Hey, once it goes through the second level approval down here, if that gets approved, maybe we then send it to the third level. And then once approved there, maybe then we go to everything's done. So I can easily go in and alter the behavior and the process for or build it from scratch for anything that you can you know, dream of in terms of facilities and HR and all the different departments that you may support. Not only internal actions like approvals, but also more advanced capabilities like making external web service calls to other applications, running external programs. Um, so you're able to actually build in interactions within other systems, whether it be Active Directory, creating you know, AD accounts, uh, Microsoft Exchange for dealing with email, so that those things can become a part of your workflow that you build in Avanti service management and you don't have to employ other third party you know, run book tools or automation tools in order to be able to do so. So very easy to configure the tool both from a, a workflow and an interface perspective. Now it's also easy to be able to get key metrics and important information out of the Monty service management, which is again probably one of the top requests of, of any uh, customer is knowing how well you're doing and, and where you need to improve. There's a set of out of the box reports for the Monty service management, a little over a hundred. Some of the key ones that I've reference frequently. I've pinned to my admin dashboard here so that I can simply click on those when need be and pull those reports up quickly or I can go into the report module where I can look at the entire library 
And these are all examples of you know, some of the out-of-the-box content that gives you key performance indicators on the different processes like incident management. Where you're looking at things like your first call resolution percentage and workload and trending, um, you know, uh, response times and resolution times and things of that nature, as well as if you're tracking anything like the costing information, how much it's costing you to support email issues and how much it's costing you to onboard employees. So you've got easy access to some key metrics using the, the reports built into Avanti Service Management itself. You've also got uh, the ability to pull dashboards and reports through a tool called Extraction, which is available with Avanti, but also provides connectors to other third-party applications. So you can use this as a way to not only easily pull help desk slash service desk metrics, but to be able to also provide the same kind of ease of, of report and dashboard building for Active Directory or your antivirus tools, McAfee, Symantec, um, Microsoft Exchange information so that you can use this as a way to pull your service desk metrics. So if I wanted information related to the incident management process, um, maybe I want to pull uh, some trending for the last week. Now let's do the last 30. If I can throw a dashboard up there, you know, you're going to me some of that trend information. Maybe I want just some key metrics. We can dig in the operational side and just pull some of those high level stats that show me you know, how many tickets and what kind of workloads spread around. I can easily throw these dashboards up on an overhead, you know, a large screen projector. I can um, set these up, little check boxes down below. So maybe I want to have several of these in a generalized area um, scanning through multiple dashboards. Maybe I want to pull in some external data. So maybe I take a dashboard built for managing security threats. Someone needs to keep watch on security patches and critical infrastructure, things of that nature. We're focused on compliance and cybersecurity. So this gives me a way not only to pull in data from Avanti service management easily and to be able to provide this to anybody and everybody through simple you know, drag and drop dashboards, but also to be able to provide this you know, information in those general areas where I can set these up on some kind of a cycle. And if I set it quite frequently and just kind of runs through these, so that this information can be made available to management, executives, uh, general staff, all together. Now, if I wanted to focus in on any particular uh, user group or date in this case, and I want to focus in here on June 19th and just take a look at what happened that day. I also have the ability to drill into these dashboards and say, just show me that one particular day when I do that, everything else on my dashboard also reflects that focus or that filter. So I'm now looking at the open VIP tickets that took place on June 19th, and I'm looking at the incidents that existed and were assigned to users on June 19th versus jumping back to December, in which case the results and the stats that I'm looking at are going to be very different. So it gives me not only drill down capability if I wanted to look at the actual um, incident, right? Actually, go take a look at the records, drill down, I can do that, but also giving me the ability to focus the entire dashboard down to that one particular user or that one particular ticket so that I can drill in more detail without actually pulling open, you know, the detailed uh, tabular style grid. You also have the ability to export this uh, data out to users very easily. You can do it manually. You can also schedule that as a scheduled task and 
have these dashboards and reports that you create and build here in extraction simply emailed out once a day to a, a distribution group or a list of users um, so that they have easy access without having to again log into the extraction portal to get it so it provides some easy um, out-of-the-box options not only to report on the service desk but also to report on other third-party applications outside of the service desk. Avanti also provides a, what they call Avanti Voice, which gives you the ability to take an entire service desk application and tie it in directly to your phone switch. So then you can do things like call routing and screen popping and automated voicemail or uh, password resets via phone that same kind of uh, voice data you know becomes another aspect of service management that you can then bring in so if you want to start tracking you know summary of time to respond and answer a number of calls dealt with and things like that then you have the ability to reach into your phone switch and get statistics out of the phone switch that are going to give you some you know key information that, that you're going to want so that I can also have this to blend in with the same reports and details I get related to the incidents and requests and things I'm dealing with within the service desk. There are a huge number of out-of-the-box reports and content that you have available with Avanti um, so that you don't have to worry about creating those reports and dashboards typically up front um, but you have easy ability to do so when necessary. Then you have the out of the box reports with Avanti itself, as well as the ability to create you know, these dashboard views so you can focus in on your incident management process, your service request process, your change management, could be asset management and CMDB where you're focused on hardware, maybe you're focused on software. And through the capabilities to integrate Avanti service management into the other parts of the Avanti family, like the land desk side of the house, which is now called the endpoint management, can provide me the capability to automatically discover this level of detail and populate this into service management into the CMDB so that when I'm dealing with a customer in the service desk, um, I have the ability to see and understand what their hardware looks like and what type of OS they're running and do they have the latest patch and things of that nature um, by virtue of the fact that I've got agents out there in the environment that give me the capability to pull that data but also to be able to um, you know, tap into that agent so that I can actively manage a device if need be. So having the tie-ins to things or having Avanti tied into the endpoint management tool will give me the capability so that when I'm dealing with a customer, not only do I have access to be able to, you know, open a window to see, okay, I, I know exactly which machine they have and to be able to link that to the ticket so that I can report on that, but also to be able to then go take a look at details for that device. So that if I'm pulling things like hardware and software config, I have access to that. If I'm if I've created a, a map of the environment that shows me where that user's you know, service is coming from and what applications and other devices do they connect to and rely upon, and the ability to see the status of you know those devices and those applications. Now I've got some valuable information to be able to help troubleshoot. And support that user on the phone um, with some subject matter expertise that I might not otherwise have if that wasn't made available through that CMDB. And in the same way, let's see before I dropped off there, you'll note that into things like the integration with our endpoint management, that's where you could then reach out from the service desk and do things to be able to you know capture that updated inventory to you know, install that desktop agent to install an application or patch or take some action on the machine. And I can define what those are for those same quick actions I referred to earlier. 
and use those as a way to kick off a software deployment or a patch fix for a machine when a user calls in and reports a problem with email you know, on the desktop machine. So it gives all three components. You know, end users have easy access through the self-service interface and through the hub, as well as mobile apps for iOS and Android. Service desk staff have easy access to be able to respond, to track service level agreements, to be able to update and add activity and use the quick actions to automate you know, the day-to-day -day tasks. And then from an admin standpoint, giving them an easy path to be able to you know, deploy the tool, configure the interface to build the dashboards, to build the workflow using the drag and drop builder, build the uh, reports and the analytics you know, through extraction and reporting in ISM, um, makes things very easy for an admin without JavaScript background. Um, without any kind of programming knowledge, to be able to go in and lay those things out with basic keyboard and mouse skills um, versus having to spend months in training um, or to have to rely on outside consultants to come in and, and perform that work for you. So with that, I'm going to open it up to any uh, questions. Rich, I don't know if I want to turn it back over to you to open that up for everybody. Or how do we want to do that? I do not see any questions in the Q&A section of this, uh, of this presentation. Folks, if you have questions, please go ahead and type them in there. Kyle will be more than happy to answer those questions for you. Um, you know, this is an opportunity to take advantage of uh, the fact that we have Kyle live today. Uh, for those of you that are a little shy, maybe don't want to interact with us live today, by all means, you can reach out to Flycast Partners at 844-FLYCAST, 844-359-2278. Uh, chat with us on our website or email us at info at flycastpartners.com. You can also reach out to Kerasoft. Uh, our partners there at Kerasoft would be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. Folks, uh, if you have any questions, please type those in now, and we'll go ahead and read those off to Kyle. Oh, uh, it looks like we only have a minute or two left of our presentation anyway, so it looks like we're almost done, and it doesn't look like we have any questions. Okay. Well, I was about to say, don't be shy. So if you got them, <laughs> speak up. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Sierra for any last-minute comments that uh, Kerasoft may have. Thank you, Rich. I'd like to thank all our participants for joining, as well as Rich and Kyle for presenting today and answering any questions that you guys have after the fact. We hope our webcast has been helpful for you and your organization. Again, this webcast was recorded and a copy of the presentation will be emailed to you. If you have any further questions or would like to request more information, feel free to contact the Avanti team at Carisoft. Our contact information will be displayed, so please do not hesitate to call or email us. Thank you again and have a great day.